Hey everyone, hello from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with you. And I'm on the show floor at reInvent, but we have a very special program series that theCUBE has been doing called Women of the Cloud. It's brought to you by AWS, and I'm so pleased to have an excellent panel of women leaders in technology and in cloud to talk about their tactical recommendations for you, what they see as cloud, where they've helped organizations be successful with cloud. Please welcome my three guests, Charu Kapoor, President and Chief Revenue Officer, Consulting and Digital Transformations at NTT Data. We have Rachel Mushawar, AWS Head of North America Partner Sales from AWS. And Jumi Barnes joins us as well, Managing Director, Investment Banking Engineering at Goldman Sachs. It is so great to have you guys on this power panel. I love it, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Charu, let's start with you. Give us a little bit of, of your background at NTT Data, and I, and I understand NTT has a big focus on women in technology and in STEM. Talk to us a little bit about that, and then we'll go around the table. Thank you, thank you. So brand new role for me at NTT Data. Uh, I started three months back, and it's a fascinating company. We are about $22 billion in size. Uh, we work across industries on multiple innovative use cases. So we're doing a ton of work on edge analytics in the cloud, and that's why we are here with AWS. We're also doing a ton of work on uh, uh, the private 5G that we're rolling out, and essentially building out industry-wide use cases across financial services, manufacturing, tech, et cetera. Uh, lots of women at Entity. We essentially have a women-run cloud program today. We have a gal called Noreen Hansen who is our practice leader for cloud. Uh, we have um, Madeline who is Latifa, who is our AWS cloud leader. Uh, we have Molly Ward who leads up uh, solutions on the cloud. We have an amazing lady in Mona who leads up our marketing programs. So a fantastic uh, plethora of diverse women uh, driving amazing work at Entity on Cloud. That's outstanding to hear because it's one of those things that you can't be what you can't see, right? We all talk about that. Rachel, talk a little bit about your role and some of the focus that AWS has. I know they're big on customer obsession. I'm sure, sure they're obsessed with other things as well. Sure, so Rachel Mushawar, pleased to be here again. I think this will be uh, my third time, so uh, a big fan of theCUBE. I'm fortunate enough to lead our North America partner and channel business. And I'll tell you, I've been at AWS for a little under two years, and honestly it's been probably the best two years of my career, just in terms of where the cloud is, where it's headed, the business outcomes that we can deliver with our customers and with our partners is absolutely remarkable. We get to you know, make the impossible possible every day. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and I'm thrilled to, uh, to be part of this inaugural Women of the Cloud panel. Oh, I'm proud to have all three of you. One of the things that, uh, feedback, kind of pivoting off what Rachel, one of the things that you said that um, one of our guests, some of, several of our guests have said is that coming out of Adam's keynote this morning, it just seems limitless what AWS can do. And I love that, it gives me kind of chills what they can do with cloud computing and technology with its ecosystem of partners, with its customers like Goldman Sachs. Jimmy, talk to us a little bit about you, your role at Goldman Sachs. You know, we think of Goldman Sachs as a, as a huge financial institution, but it's also a technology company. Yeah, I mean, since the age of 15, I've been super passionate about how we can use technology to transform business and simplify, modernize business processes. And it's, I'm so thrilled that I have the opportunity to do that at Goldman Sachs as an engineer. I recently moved about two years ago into the investment banking business. And it's, you know, it's best in class, one of the top um, companies in terms of mergers and acquisitions, IPOs, etc. But what surprised me is how technology enables all the businesses across the board. Right? And I get to be leading the digital platform for, uh, building out the digital platform for in the investment banking business, where we're modernizing and transforming existing businesses. These are not new businesses. Mm. It's like sometimes I liken it to trying to change the train while it's moving. Right. Right? These are existing businesses, but now we get to modernize and transform on the cloud, right? Not just efficiency for the business, but efficiency 
for technologists as well. Right, right. Sticking with you, Jimmy, I want to understand, so you've been, you've been interested in tech since you were young. I only got into tech kind of accidentally as an adult. I'm curious about your career path. But talk to us about that. What are some of the recommendations that you would have for other women who might be looking at, I want to be in technology, but I want to work for some of the big companies, and they don't think about the Goldman Sachs or some of the other companies like Walmart that are absolutely technology driven. What's your advice for those women who yeah. want to grow their career? I will say growing up, I was, I was interested in various things. I, I love doing hair. I used to do my own hair and I used to do hair for other students at school. Huh. And I was also interested in running an entertainment company and I used to actually go around performing and singing and dancing with a group of friends, especially at church. Um, but what amazed me is when I landed my first job at a real estate agent and everything was being done manually on paper, I was like, wow, technology can bring transformation anywhere and everywhere. And so whilst I have a myriad of interests, there's so many ways that technology can be applied. Mm -hmm. There's so many different types of disciplines within technology. It's not, there's hands on, like I'm colder, I like to code, but there are product managers, there are business analysts, there are infrastructure specialists, there are security specialists. And I think it's about pursuing your passion, right? Pursuing your passion and identifying which aspects of technology pique your interest and then diving in. Get involved. I love that, diving That's in. Really Rachel, you're shaking your head. You're, I am. Yes, you definitely are in alignment with a lot of what you do. I am. So, you know, interesting enough, I actually started my career as a civil engineer and um, eventually made it into, into technology. So very similar. I saw in, you know, heavy highway construction how manual some of these processes were and Mind you, this was before the cloud, and I sat down and wrote a little computer program to automate a lot of these manual tasks, and for me, it was about simplification of the customer journey and really figuring out how do you deliver value, you know, and fast forward, say, 20 plus years, uh, here I am with AWS who has got this amazing cloud platform with over 200 services. And when I think about what we do in tech, from business transformation to modernizing, to helping customers think about how do they create new business models, I've really found, uh, I've really found my sweet spot. And I'll say for anyone who wants to get into tech or even switch careers, there's just a couple words of advice that I have, and it's really two words. Just start. Yes. That's it. Just start. Because sometimes later becomes never, and you know, fuel your passion. Be curious, think about new things, yes. and just start. I love that, Just Start. You should get t-shirts made with that. <laughs> Tara, talk a little bit about some of your recommendations. Obviously, Just Start is a great one. Follow your passion. What would you say to those out there looking to climb the ladder? So, you know, my, my story is a little bit like Jumi's because I did not want to be in tech. Uh, you know, I wanted an easy life. Uh, I did well <laughs> in school and I wanted to actually be an air hostess. And when I broke that to my father, you know, the standard Indian, uh, persona he did he you know he wanted me to go in and be an engineer okay so I was actually pushed into computer engineering graduated but then really two things today right when I look back really two pieces two areas I believe which are really important for success one is you know we need to be competent and the second is we need to be confident mm, right yes. yes it's so much easier to be competent because a lot of us diverse women diverse people tend to over rotate on knowing their technical skills, right? Knowing technical skills is important, but you need to know how to potentially apply those to business, right? Be able to define a business ROI. And I see Jumi mm -hmm. nodding because she wants people to come in and give her a business ROI yes. for programs that you're executing at yeah. Goldman Sachs, I presume. The more difficult part though is confidence. Absolutely. It's so hard, it, especially when, when we're younger, we don't know Raise your hand because I guarantee you either half the people in the, in the room or on the Zoom these days weren't listening or have the same question and are too afraid to ask because they don't have the confidence. That's Give right. me, let's pivot on confidence for a minute. Jim, and let's go back to you. How would you advise your younger self to find your confidence? Hmm. 
that's that's a tough one because I feel like even this older self is still finding yeah. confidence <laughs> like, to to be real. But yeah. I think it's about I would say it's no praise. I think it's about praising yourself, like recognizing. Mm-hmm your accomplishments. When I think about my younger self, I think I lot I liked to focus more on what I didn't do or what I didn't accomplish instead of majoring and focusing on all the accomplishments and the achievements and reminding myself of those day after day after day. And I think it's about celebrating your wins. I love that celebrating your wins. You agree, Rachel? I do. Here's the hard part. And I look around this table of amazing business leaders And I can guarantee that every single one of us sometime this year woke up and said, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do that. Oh yeah. But what we haven't followed that by is I don't know how to do that yet. Right. And here's the other thing I would tell my younger self is there will be days where every single one of us falls apart. There will be days when we feel like we failed at work. There will be days when you feel like you failed as a parent or you failed as a spouse. There will be days where you have a kid in the middle of Target screaming and crying while you're trying to close a big (laughs) business deal and you just feel like, oh my gosh, is this really my life? But what I would tell my younger self is, look, the crying, the chaos, the second guessing yourself, the successes, Every single one of those are milestones, and it's triumphant, it's tragic, but every single thing that we have been through is fiercely worthwhile, and it's what got us here. Absolutely, absolutely. Think of all the trials and tribulations and zigs and zags that got you to this table right now. So, Terry, you brought up confidence. How would you advise the women out there, we won't say your younger self, the women out there now that are watching, those that are watching right there, hi. Um, how would you advise them to really find their their ability to praise themselves, recognize all of the trials and the tribulations as milestones, as Rachel said, and really give themselves a seat at the table, raise their hand regardless of who else is in the room? You know, it's a, it's a more complex question just because confidence stems from courage, right? Confidence also stems from the belief that you're going to be treated fairly, right? Now, in an organization, for you to be treated fairly, you need to have, be surrounded by supporters that are going to promote your voice. And very often, women don't invest enough in building that support system around them, <laughs> yeah. right? We have mentors, and mentors are great because they come in and they advise us. <laughs> and they'll tell us what we need to go out and do. We really need a team of sponsors yes. who come in and support us in the moment, in the business, give us uh, the informal channel because very often we are not plugged into the informal channel, right? So we don't get those special projects or assignments or even opportunities to prove that we can do the tough task. Yeah. So you know, my, my advice would be to go out and build a network of sponsors. Yes. And if you don't have one, be a sponsor for someone else. That's right. A I love great that. way to win sponsorship is by extending it to others. And sometimes too, it's about, honestly, I didn't even know the difference between a mentor and a sponsor until a few years ago. Yeah. And I started thinking, who are mine? And then I started yes. realizing who they were. That's and, right. And some of the conversations that we've had on theCUBE about women in technology, women of the cloud, some of the women leaders have said, build, and this is kind of like Terry, what you were saying, build your own personal board of directors. Yeah. And that oh, it gives me chills. <laughs> it's just, it's so important for, sure. for not just women, anybody. For everyone. But it's so important to do that. And if you, yeah. if you think about LinkedIn as an example, you have a network. It's there. It Utilize is. it. Figure out who your mentors are, who your sponsors are, who are going to help you land the next thing. Start building that reputation, but having that board of directors that you can kind of answer to or have some accountability towards, I think is hugely Very important. important. Yeah. I Very think, important. you know, just for, just for those that are listening, a really important distinction for me was mentors are people that you have that help you with, um, hey, here's the situation that you were just in. They advise you on the situation. Sponsors are the people that stick up for you when you're not in the room, right? Sponsors are the ones that say, hey, I think so-and-so not only needs to have a seat at the table, but they need to build the table. 
And that's a really important delineation yeah. between mentors and sponsors. And everybody's got to have a sponsor, both within their company and outside of their company. Someone that's advocating for them on their behalf when they don't even know it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you yeah. said that build a table. It reminds me of a quote that I heard from Will I Am. I know, very random. It was a podcast he did with Oprah Winfrey on AI. He's very into AI and I was doing a panel on AI, so I was doing a lot of research. And he said, similar to Rachel to build the table, don't wait for a door to open, you go build a door. And I yes. just thought, God, yeah. that is yeah. such brilliant yeah. advice. Yeah. It is. It's hard to do. It is. Especially it is. when, you know, the four of us in this room, there's a lot of women around here, but we are in a, an environment where we are the minority. Uh, women of color are also the minority. What do you guys think where tech is in terms of DE&I and really focusing on DE&I as, as really um, uh, a very focused strategic initiative? Trevor, what do you think? So, you know, I just, I, I spoke earlier about the women that we have at Entity Data, right? We have a fabulous team of women. And joining this team has been a moment of revelation for me coming in. I think to promote DNI, we all need to start giving back, right? Yes. So today, I would love to announce that we at Entity would like to welcome all of you out there, you know, folks that have diverse ideas, uh, you know, ISV partners with diverse solutions, uh, thought leaders out there who want to contribute into the ecosystem, right? Uh, customers out there who want to work with companies that are socially responsible. Right? We want to work with all of you. Come back, reach out to us, and be a part of the ecosystem because we can build this together, right? AWS has an amazing platform that gives us an opportunity to do things differently. Yes. Right, Entity Data is building a women-powered cloud mm -hmm. team, and I want to really extend that out to everyone else to I be a part that. of this ecosystem. What a fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion and equity, it needs to be intentional for organization. It sounds very intentional at NTT. I know that that intention is definitely there at AWS as well. What are your thoughts on where tech is with respect to diversity, even thought diversity? Because a lot of times we tend right. to go to our comfort zones. We and do. And so we tend to start creating these circles of kind of like, you know, think tanks and they think alike. That's we need right. to be able to go outside of that comfort zone. That's part of building the table of building the it table is. and getting people from outside your comfort zone to come in and bring in diverse thought because can you imagine the potential of technology if we have true thought diversity in an organization? Right. It's it's incredible. So one of the things that I always share with my team is we've got the opportunity to really change the outcome, right? As uh, you know, you talked about Will I am. I'm going to talk about Bono from U2, right? One of uh, one of his favorite quotes is we are the people we've been waiting for. I love and that. when you think about that, that is us. There is no one else that's going to change the outcome and continue to deliver some of the business outcomes and the innovation that we are if we don't continue to raise our hand and yeah. we don't continue to inspire the next generation of leaders to do the same thing. And what I found is when you start openly sharing what your innovation ideas are or how you're leveraging your engineering background, your stories and your successes and frankly some of your failures become the inspiration for someone you might not even know. Absolutely. And that's the, you know, that's the key, you're right. Um, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. Yes have to be at the forefront of every business decision. And I think too often companies think that, you know, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility is one thing, and business outcomes are another. And they're not. No. They are one in the same. You can't build business outcomes without also focusing on inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility. That's the deliberate piece. And it has to be deliberate. Jimmy, I want to ask you, we only have a couple of minutes left, but you're a woman in tech, you're a woman of color. What was that like for you? You, you were very intentional knowing when you were quite young yes. what you wanted to do, but how have you navigated that? Because I can't imagine that was easy. 
It wasn't. I remember I always tell the story. And the, the two things that I really wanted to emphasize today when I thought about this panel is represent, representation matters and showing up matters, right? And there's a statement, there's a quote, I don't know who it's attributed to, but be the change you want to see. Yeah. I remember walking through the doors of Goldman Sachs 15 years ago and not seeing a black female engineer leader, right? And at that point in time, I had a choice. I could be like, oh, there's no one look like, there's no one that looks like me. I don't belong here. Or I could do what I actually did and say, well, I'm going to be that person. Good. Right? I'm going to be the chain. I'm going to show up and I'm going to have a seat at the table so that other people behind me can also have a seat at the table. And I think that I've had the privilege to work for a company who has been inclusive, who has had the right support system, the right structures in place so that I can be that person who is the first black woman tech fellow at Goldman Sachs, who is one of the first black females to be promoted up the ranks as a at, from analyst to a managing director at the company you know that was be, not just because i determined that i belong here but because the company ensured that i felt that i belong right here. that's a great point they ensure that you felt that yeah you need to be able to feel that last question we've only got about a minute left 2023 is just around the corner what comes to your mind jimmy we'll stick with you as you head into the new year sorry can you repeat you yeah, what comes to mind priorities for 2023 that you're excited about I'm excited about the democratization of data. Yeah. I'm excited about a lot of the um, announcements today. And I, I think there is a, a huge shift going on with this whole concept of marketplaces and data exchanges and data sharing. And I think both internally and externally, people are coming together more, companies are coming together more to really de democratize and make data available. And data is power. A lot of our businesses are running, running on insights, right? And we need to bring that data together. And I'm really excited about the trend that's going on in cloud, in technology, to actually bring the data sets together. Tari, what are you most excited about as we head to 2023? I think I'm really excited about the possibilities that NGT Data has. Right here, right now, City of Las Vegas, we've actually rolled out a smart city project. So saving citizens' life using data, edge analytics, machine learning, being able to predict adverse incidents before they happen and then being able to take remediation action, right? So that's technology actually working in real time to give us tangible results. We also sponsor the IndyCar races. Lots of work happening there in delivering amazing customer experience across the platform to millions of users yeah. real time. So I think I'm just excited about technology coming together, but while that's happening, I think we really need to be mindful at this time that we don't push our planet into peril. Right. We need to be sustainable, uh, we need to be responsible. Absolutely. Rachel, take us out. What are you most Perfect. excited about going into 2023? So, you know, there are so many trends um, that, are, that we could talk about, but I'll tell you, at AWS, you know, we're big. We impact the world. So we've got to be really thoughtful and humble about what it is that we do. So for me, what I'm most excited about is, you know, one of our leadership principles is about you know, with, uh, with broad responsibility brings, you know, you've got to impact sustainability and many of those other things. And for me, I think it's about waking up every day for our customers, for our partners, and for the younger generations and being better, doing better, and making better for this planet and for you know the future generations to come. So I think your tagline of just start applies to all of that. It Ladies, does. it has been an absolute pleasure and then really an honor to talk to you on the program. Thank you all for joining me, sharing your experiences, sharing what you've accomplished, your recommendations for those others who might be our same generation or older or younger. All really beautiful advice. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage. Thanks for watching.